All right, let's see. First up is, um, yes, BRICS. Uh, a lot of talk about BRICS. Uh, a lot of, um, I think, confusion about BRICS. Uh, BRICS uh, stands for Brazil, Russia, China, sorry, India, China. It was originally BRIC uh, when it was uh, coined uh, BRIC uh, in 2001 by an analyst or uh, an analyst at Goldman Sachs in a paper that expressed the potential of Brazil, Russia, India, and China uh, and kind of predicted that these economies had the potential to overtake uh, the West and, and to overtake kind of the United States and, and, and Europe um, in terms of economic activity and become uh, dominant players. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that they have uh, significant natural resources. China was growing enormously during this period. Russia had just been liberated from communism and, and seemed to be poised uh, for a, a significant period of... Um, of growth, which it experienced and then didn't. Uh, and, and of course, Brazil has the natural resources. And again, it, was, it seemed like this was the beginning of an era where they were going to be uh, incredibly successful in India. Of course, the, 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 today, the largest population in the world, at the time, second largest after China, again, recently liberalized. Uh, uh, India was liberalized in the early 1990s. And, uh, and therefore seemed like this amazing uh, e economic growth, uh, potential economic growth story. Um, a, a year later, in, in 2000, uh, no, sorry, in, in, in 2010, in 2010, uh, the first summit, the first BRIC summit was held in 2009 uh, during the um, global financial crisis. And again, it looked like it looked like, you know, the U.S. was in decline, Europe was in decline, they were in recession. The next few years didn't make that seem any better as uh, Europe went into the great its own financial crisis with Greece and, and, and the whole uh, sovereign debt crisis. Uh, and in 2010, so BRICS again seemed uh, like the future, seemed like strong, seemed like they were the economic future of the world. In 2010, South Africa joined uh, the BRIC and it became BRICS. And South Africa did so on the basis of natural resources. And again, what everybody believed was this un, uh, you know, untapped capacity for economic growth and, and wealth creation and uh, a, a relatively educated population uh, and, um, and a, a system of, of law that was kind of based on a British system of law, property rights. So there was a lot of promise, it seemed, and there was, uh, around South Africa. So BRICS were hailed uh, as kind of the economic future, uh, the economic future. The reason, of course, this is in the news right now is because uh, BRICS are having their uh, 15th summit. Uh, when is it? Tomorrow. It starts tomorrow in Johannesburg. Uh, Johannesburg, uh, the, uh, a city I've been to three times. Um, uh, um, uh, you know, which is uh, the largest city in South Africa, and uh, it, it is holding the summit. The uh, president of South Africa will be there, as will the, the prime minister of India, Modi, as Lula, the president of Brazil, and even Xi, Xi Jinping, uh, will be traveling from China. The only, the only BRICS, uh, uh, you know, leader who will not be at, in Johannesburg is uh, Vladimir Putin, who, if he came to Johannesburg, came to South Africa, would actually be arrested. <laughs> I find this so entertaining. Um, it turns out South Africa is a member of the International Criminal Court and is obliged to uh, act on, on the arrest warrant that the International Criminal Court has issued against Vladimir Putin. So Putin is home. Um, uh, he sent his foreign minister, uh, Lavarov, uh, who is not yet being indicted, yet being indicted by the International Court, uh, Criminal Court, uh, while Putin stays home uh, for this uh, get-together uh, in Johannesburg. Uh, you know, the last 20-something years have not been that favorable uh, to the BRICS. Uh, while um, it's true that the share of GDP that the BRICS represents have uh, significantly increased uh, from... Uh, close to, uh, I don't know, close to 8% maybe in, in 2000 to over 20% today. Indeed, BRICS today 
uh, represent a greater percentage of global GDP than the European Union does. But that's cheating, right? I mean, that's a bit of a joke because that's basically China. <laughs> I mean, China is that increase in global GDP, uh, in, in uh, percent of global GDP. Russia has not increased. Brazil has not increased. South Africa has not increased. India has increased somewhat, so it's a little bit of uh, a little bit of India, uh, a little bit of India, and a lot of China. Uh, indeed, uh, on average, GDP of Brazil, Russia, and South Africa has grown less than one percent over the last ten years, while China and India both grown six percent a year. So uh, there's no bricks here. There's China and maybe India as uh, growing economies, as significant global players from an economic perspective. Um, and that's it. Uh, the rest of uh, the other three uh, members, Brazil, Russia, and South Africa, are insignificant um, uh, to, uh, to global GDP. Uh, so uh, uh, this is not a, a significant challenge. The G7, which is the big seven economies of the West, if you will, represent 40% of, uh, of global GDP, so still significantly larger than BRICS. And again, BRICS is dominated uh, by, um, by um, China. Of course, the G7 is dominated by the United States. Uh, the United States economy has grown uh, significantly faster than Brazil, Russia, and South Africa's economies have grown. Uh, so, you know, the, 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 the uh, group exists. Um, there's a big move by China. China wants to really establish this as an alternative to the West. Uh, the big move by China is to increase membership, increase membership in uh, BRICS, uh, and uh, to accept a bunch of other countries. There are 40 different countries that have applied. These are all going to be uh, developing countries. Uh, these are not going to be European countries or, or or North American countries, but they are developing countries, potentially uh, Mexico, uh, Argentina, or anybody would want to admit Argentina into anything, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I think uh, I'm looking at a map here and I'm trying to figure out what these countries are. But you've got Libya, uh, uh, Libya, really? Oh, no, not Libya, sorry. Uh, Algeria, not Libya. God, I should know that. Nigeria which is, of course, the largest country by population in Africa. Uh, so, so significant countries would like to join uh, uh, BRICS. Uh, I think Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, Kazakhstan, uh, just south of Russia. Um, uh, some countries don't... Uh, so uh, China's trying to push this. India doesn't really want more people in here. Uh, Russia will do whatever China tells it because Russia's in trouble because of the war. Uh, and... Uh, the consequences here are uh, that, uh, you know, BRICS is just a game. Uh, they've got 18 candidates that are possible candidates, 40 that have applied, but 18 that are possible. They might add these members in. It is hard to tell. Uh, I think, I guess, uh, you know, uh, I guess you want to know why uh, BRICS have uh, grown so slowly. I mean, primarily because of rotten economic policies. I mean, uh, South Africa is a complete disaster in spite of its huge potential, in spite of the massive amount of natural resources. It is run by a klepto kleptocracy, a, a complete, uh, a complete uh, corrupt regime. Uh, it, is, it is a one-party state, unfortunately, for the most part. Uh, since apartheid has disappeared, nobody, uh, the ANC has won every single election. The ANC is thoroughly corrupt. Uh, and instead of cultivating uh, private property, instead of cultivating uh, a business and education, uh, they have been uh, too involved in redistribution of wealth and in their own corruption. Uh, and and South, so South Africa is, a, is an insignificant uh, economic power in spite of the fact that it could be. It has all the, all the pieces to make it a, a dramatic, a significant economic player, uh, it just needs free markets. It just needs economic freedom and it needs uh, to provide the right kind of, uh, that will provide the right kind of incentives uh, to see South Africa grow dramatically. Uh, Russia, we all know the story in Russia. Russia is the kleptocracy in the world. 
It is run by a clique of oligarchs. It has no free markets. It is basically this, uh, not done anything but emphasize natural resources. Uh, so in spite of the fact that Russia has a very educated population, uh, it, it is not invested in high tech. It is not invested in, in business. It is basically focused wealth creation on natural resources. Oh. And uh, finally, Brazil, corrupt um, and, and, and ridiculous economic policies. Bolsonaro had slightly better economic policies than the leftists to have run Brazil for most of the last 20 years, but they were only slightly better. Uh, China and India have both dramatically liberalized economically over the last 30 years, although China, of course, as we know, is heading in the wrong direction. All right, quickly, uh, BRICS, uh, uh, a story of the past, though. The reality is that, as we talked about on Saturday, China is in decline. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. China's in decline. China's economy is not doing well. And, of course, demographic, demographically, it is imploding. India is growing. India has this massive economic potential, but again, India is badly managed, badly run, focused on nationalism rather than economic growth, focused on nationalism and mercantilism, and, and too many mercantilist policies, too many regulatory uh, central government policies uh, to allow uh, India to actually uh, take advantage of, 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 again, the British educational system, a British court system, and, uh, and a, a significant proportion of the population highly educated, a, a massive uh, amount of people for workforce and as consumers, uh, India is not nowhere near uh, to exploiting all that uh, to become an economic power. Okay, finally, there is talk about BRICS adopting an alternative currency to the dollar. Yeah, right. that's a joke. It, it ain't happening. They can't agree on anything, these people. It's a bunch of authoritarian thugs who can't agree with one another on anything. Um, uh, they're all a bunch of statists. Uh, the the idea of adopting a currency to replace the dollar will not be raised at this meeting. The uh, representative, the, the uh, foreign minister of South Africa, has stated. So that is not an issue. The idea of uh, de-dollarizing, that is, getting off the dollar, will not even be raised in this meeting uh, because. They know it's impossible, and they know they don't have what it takes uh, uh, to do it. They will talk about increasing trade in local currencies. There'll be a lot of talk about that. They'll declare their independence. They'll declare the evil of the West. They'll declare the evil of Europe and America. And But nothing will change because the reality is that nobody actually in the world wants to trade using local currencies. It's too risky. It's too Risky, really, really risky. Why would you want to trade in yuan or, or rubles or South African rand when you don't know what the value is going to be tomorrow and, and, and the potential for crashes and the potential for instability? Who the hell wants to be stuck with a bunch of Brazilian, Brazilian what? God, whatever the currency is in Brazil. I mean, nobody wants that. So no, trade globally will be in dollars for the foreseeable future, um, uh, and, and this meeting uh, by the BRICS uh, is not going to change that significantly.